What's poppin' T-Squad? It's your girl Keisha and I'm here with tonight's All Tea All Shade Married to Medicine Season 8 Episode 2 Review. So we pick up exactly where we left off with Toya drunk ass times. I'm ready to go. <laughs> you can put me out. <laughs> so she walk off drunk and shit and leave the poor girl Anila with these crazy ass Negroes. So she goes over to the men and just start going off and says to Damon, I'm tired of your wife and, and uh, Simone fake breakup. Then she says to Big Country, and she tired of his wife too And they looking at her like What the fuck is going on So Toy was like I want to go home And Eugene pull her off to the side And the guy's just looking like What in the fuck is going on Jesus Is it Mercury retrograde So Simone says You know I probably should have picked up the phone And said I don't harbor any ill feelings and Heavenly was like, you and Jackie haven't been communicating like you always have. And Simone says, when we were in New York and you said to me that me and Heavenly's relationship with you was equally important, that hurt my feelings. I'm thinking some shit I built with you 20 years was worth more. I agree with Simone. I'll be damned if my best friend, Losha, me and Losha have been friend, best friends now for... 20, 30, 30 years, 30 years this year, we will be friends, best friends since we were 10 years old. And if she put me on the same level as a girl that she's just become friends with over like the, maybe the last three years, I'm going to look at her like she fucking crazy. Cause we're nowhere on the same level of friends in your life. Like what? Like, no, like, and I would never put somebody that I've just been friends with for that amount of time on the same level as her or Monique. Like, that's a whole nother level of friendship. Like, the shit that we done been through together. We done been through death, hospital, births, weddings, you know, everything that you can go through, puberty, like, everything that you could go through, we've been through together. Like, these people know me inside out. They know the deepest parts of me you know what I'm saying Losh can look at me and tell what kind of mood I'm in you know what I'm saying so that would hurt my feelings too that you would put me on the same level as this chick like the fuck so Jackie was like you're exactly right we've been through some stuff I heard too and you not correct and Buffy and I'm looking like are we really going through that again there was nothing for her to correct Buffy on bitch you were 100% wrong for the way that you carried that woman there was nothing for her to stick up for. You were 100% wrong. You didn't want to admit that you was wrong. You was fucking rude as hell to her. The, when you even apologized, it was like, I apologize. Get the fuck over it. Like, type shit. Like, you were wrong, ma'am. Like, I'm not understanding what Jackie don't get about that. Maybe it's because she hungry. I don't know. So Simone was like, I was having your back. I told Buffy that's not your heart and that's not who you are. But apparently, you don't know me. Like, the fact that you're even questioning me and our friendship, once again, says a lot about what you think about me. Like, so um, Simone gets up because she's in her feelings. And in her confessional, she says, how can my friend of 20 years think that I didn't have her back? Heavenly says, you never said anything derogatory about Jackie. And I'm looking like, Heavenly, shut the fuck up. Let them talk it out. This is the problem because you keep on getting in the middle of they shit. You keep on, like, throwing little darts. Like, why would you even ask her some shit like that? Like, what? So Simone was like, why the fuck would I say something derogatory about my friend? Like, what? So Simone storms off and she starts crying. Cecil and Anila, you know, rush over to her and give her a hug and console her. And um, Simone goes back over to say bye because she like she ready to go. So she says to Heavenly, I'm not blaming you for what's going on between me and her. And Heavenly was like, you know, I think things went well for you and I. And Simone says, I just hate that you went to so to the gutter concerning um, Cecil. Now, these are my thoughts on this whole Cecil Heavenly situation. Cecil said that she needed to hose her house down. She then came back and called that man drunk and this, this, that, and the third. I didn't feel like his comment was that damn shady for her to go to that level. But once again, you can't do something to a person and tell them how to react. I myself wouldn't have took it that far and that deep. I would have picked up the phone and said something like, yo, that, that was kind of shady. You know, it hurt my feelings. But her house did need to be sprayed. Like, so where was the lie? But I felt like it was like she just took it to a whole nother level. We all know how heavenly mouth is. She talked reckless to everybody. And I felt like 
one wasn't as bad as the other. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't have personally reacted that way, especially considering this is my husband, my friend's husband. You know what I'm saying? Like it was a whole nother way to handle the situation if it did make her feel some type of way. So, um, Heavenly then says, when your husband say stuff negative about me, I don't have the right to give my opinion as well. And Simone was like, you do. So Heavenly was like, he gave his first and I have mine and I gave mine and the motherfucker couldn't take it. That's why he always look at me sideways. And I'm like, here you go calling this man a motherfucker. Like, <laughs> like she don't never know how to control that snout of hers. Like Jesus Christ. I don't understand how ain't nobody slapped the dog shit out of this woman. So Heavenly gets up in that damn two crop top set that she got on with pantyhose covering her stomach looking a mess Simone was like and I'm gonna build some opinions about Damon heavily say put it out there bitch and I was like see this is the problem you act like you want to make up with her but then the next breath you call this woman a bitch I would have slapped her ass I would have kicked her in her fucking gut like who are you talking to why hasn't nobody whooped this old bitch's ass like the fuck is going on so um heavily say don't fuck with me because I'm trying to get along with your dirty ass and this is why Simone has a problem with Jackie because ain't no way in hell, okay? I'm into it with a bitch. I don't give a fuck if you was friends. We was both friends with this hoe at one point. And she talk about me the way that Heavenly say shit to Simone, calling her dirty ass, calling her husband motherfuckers and drunk asses and this, this, that, and the third. And you talking about this bitch is a good friend of you? Nah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, we ain't rolling like that. Like... No, if me and my friend is friends with somebody and me and her and she and the girl fall out, the girl ain't did nothing to me, but she and the girl fall out and the girl get to talking reckless about her. You think I'm still going to be friends with her? Fuck no. It don't roll like that. So I understand where Simone is coming from. I would be side-eyeing Jackie too because I would never let nobody, no bitch or no nigga on earth talk crazy about you. Sorry, just not happen. And then I'm going to still say that, oh, she's my friend. She ain't never did nothing to me. Like, mm, fuck you. Sorry, it happened to you, but it ain't did nothing to me. Like, nah, that's some fake-ass Fugazi-ass shit. I don't know how Jackie Beanstalk-ass roll, but nah, we don't get down like that. So Damon steps up to Heavenly was like, Stop talking. Just stop talking. It's okay. It doesn't have to be like this. You don't have no real reason to be upset with her. Black people are under attack. We don't need to attack each other. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, Winnie the Pooh. So Simone and Anila get back in the van with Toya and Eugene. And Toya sees Simone crying. She was like, what's wrong with you? I got to go fight a bitch. And I was like, that's the type of friend you need. You need a friend like Toya. Toya was on go. So Toya, um returns home from tennis and her kids are there doing her their school work and she says that uh she had to take her kids out the school that they were in because there weren't many kids of color or staff members of color and that they weren't really talking about the black lives matter movement and she wanted them to be in a environment that you know you know um uh, believed in the cause and talked about it and uh, wanted her kids to be in an environment where there were more people that look like them. And I agree. I don't feel like kids should be in an environment where they don't see people that look like them. I was in a school like that from first to third grade where I was, it would be one or two black kids in a room and I was surrounded by white children. I got called nigger. Some kids didn't want to play with me. It was a very sobering experience. You know what I'm saying? I was, I ended up becoming friends with the little Jewish girl. Cause did nobody want to be friends with her? Cause she had the nose and the curly hair. And so we end up becoming each other's friends. Cause we didn't have anybody. I think that it's important to have children in an environment where they can learn about their culture and be around like minded people and people that look like them. So Contessa and Scott are opening a practice together and doing renovations on the space. And they sit down and talk. And Scott says, are you ready to do this? And Contessa was like, are you? And Scott was like, we got we got to work on some things. So we find out they're still struggling in their marriage. They're still arguing about the things that they've been arguing about. And we know that this season is going to be a lot of talk that Scott is cheating on Contessa. So... Woo child, we're going to see how that shit roll out. So Funky Dineva goes to see Heavenly at her uh, dental practice to get his side tooth fixed. You know, he was missing a tooth over here and she fixed it and it looks a lot better. So we visit Anila's home. Um, 
I just hate the way that the production company, not Bravo, the production company did Mariah. How you gonna replace her with a fake ass Mariah and Aiden? Like, okay, girl, but all right, this lady ain't did none of this to us. It ain't her fault. But um, her nanny in the kitchen cooking her kids some milky ass vegetables. I don't know what the fuck that shit was she was cooking, but I was like, Ugh. So her husband comes home and we get to know their backstory. They got together seven years prior. He's a surgeon. She used to be an analysis for a perfume company in New York. Now she's a blogger since she has to be at home with the kids or whatever. I don't really understand why she has to be at home with the kids, but okay. So they're building a house, but things are on hold because of COVID and they talk about that and um, she actually met Toya because the contractor that's doing her home is the one that did Toya's home. She seems like a nice girl enough. She hasn't got on my nerve too much, you know, but I will keep my eye on fake ass Mariah. So Simone and, um, her son, uh, Cecil and her son, Michael are at his little graduation party. He's graduated high school and going on to college. And like I said, Michael has gone through a growth spurt. He's so handsome now. Um, Eugene stops by the party, Anila and her family come, Toya arrives with her kids, and um, Toya says that she wishes that Simone would have invited Jackie. This would have been a great icebreaker to invite her, you know, she has been a big part of this young man's life and his experience, so you have to want to work on it with friendships are much like relationships you have to work at them if you want them to last because you're going to have ebbs and flows where it may be times where you're not speaking as much where you're not seeing each other so you have to put forth the effort if you want the relationship to continue on and I feel like both of them are being stubborn as hell um when it comes to this situation um, so Jackie, um, comes home to big country cooking chicken in an air fry and says that it turned her on. And I was like, I guess it does girl with your boring ass. So they discussed Damon's party and she says that it bothers her what happened with her and Simone. And she feels like COVID got in the way and life got in the way. And I was like, it's more than just COVID in life. It's the fact that you didn't have your best friends back and you kind of let her off and chose somebody else over her let's keep it a buck you chose heavily over Simone sorry so um she says that she's hurt that she didn't get invited to Michael's party and I'm pretty sure that she was considering the fact that she delivered him that would hurt me too she thinks that it's more than the statement she made about her and uh heavenly being on the same level of friendship with her she thinks that it's more to it um I think it's that statement. I think it's the fact that you're still friends with somebody who's talked so negatively about Simone and her husband. Um, yeah. I think it's you accusing her of not having your back with the Buffy situation. I think it is multiple things. So Simone and Neela and Toya talk and Simone says to Toya, do we need another drink to discuss what went wrong at the party? And Toya was like, I wanted you to say, can I try to develop some trust with you again? That bothered me. Like y'all skirting around, beating around the bush. So Simone says, you know, I laid my heart out there and I was honest. Um, and I do feel like she really put herself out there. I feel like Jackie put herself out there. They're just not connecting. They're just, it just ain't working. It's just not. So um, Heavenly acts. I'm sorry. So Simone visits Heavenly at her house so they can talk and they sit outside and Heavenly asks her where things went wrong. Simone says the tweets. Heavenly says, when Mariah says she had receipts on my husband, I felt like you took her side and took joy in it. I felt like those tweets came from you. Now, they never showed Simone denying that the tweets didn't come from her. It, her explanation really seemed like some shit they co copied and pasted. It was weird. But they end up coming to an agreement that, you know, they're going to try to work on things or whatever. Um, heavily apologizes and says that she has to be more conscious of her words. And she really does before somebody knock on her teeth. But this is heavily. She always says she's going to watch her words and she never does. Simone asks how Jackie is and heavily says that she's okay and that, you know, you should call her like y'all need to talk. Um, and then heavily dogs uh, apparently eats a squirrel, look like a baby rat to me. But okay. Um, and that was the end of the episode. Um, I give tonight's episode a B minus. It was cute. It was cute for what it was. I'm ready for things to heat up. 
Um, it's sad to see what's going on with Jackie and Simone. Um, but sometimes, you know, relationships come to an end. You know, everybody don't grow the same way. Hopefully they can figure this thing out. If not, it'll be really unfortunate. Let me know what you guys think about tonight's episode down below in the comment section. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell button. I love you guys immensely. I will see you on the next review. Bye.